All right, so like, I'm extremely excited to be here uh, for Frost Events. I'm the uh, senior polymer uh, formulation scientist for them. And I wanna start by uh, following like this undercurrent uh, statement that everybody's been saying here uh, with ag tech. First of all, we all uh, like to eat, we all need to eat, we all love to eat. Uh, but at Frost Defense and Virotech, we also realize that we all like to drink. And so, <laughs> so a lot of our technology is centered around uh, working in crops of vineyards and, and grapes in particular, and how we can protect those grapes from uh, damage that occurs during frost in a given season. So um, as a formulation scientist, you know, I'm extremely privileged to be here and extremely privileged to be a part of this company and to see this product from its infancy, infancy all the way to uh, into the field. And so uh, we are SBR funded, NSF uh, funded program right now. We're in phase one. And um, our founder and president, Manfredo Sofer Hill, he couldn't be here with us today. Um, so we wanted to start with his, wel his welcome video from the vineyard that he's working at right now out in Washington State. So. Hi everyone, from the beautiful vineyards of Red Mountain Vineyards in Washington State, in Benton City, I am Manfredo Soifertel, and we are Frost Defense and Biotech. So, he couldn't be here, really wanted to be here, but he sent this from the field. He's, right, he's out there right now applying our technology to the field, which is extremely, extremely exciting. So, one of the big stresses for me is, you know, you make this thing in a laboratory, and then you have to actually prove it. And so, going into the field is a lot of stress involved with that. So, um, so without further ado, I want to start by at least introducing our team. So uh, Manfredo is our president, founder, and then uh, Dr. Brian Jewett is in the room. He's our, our co-founder and vice president, myself, formulations, and then uh, Julio and Carlos Teleria, they, are, they work on our analytics and sensor technology. Uh, Rick Hammond is out there. He works with some of our uh, sample development and uh, running samples. And then Dr. Marcus Keller also collaborates with uh, Rick to get some of our data, collect some of our crop data out in Washington State. So um, I want to first give a little history background about our company, and we have a little short two-minute video kind of explaining how we got to this point. Uh, Manfredo went through the i process, and so he's done a lot of customer discovery, talked to many people in the field, different crops, and uh, really got some great feedback and used that to guide some of the things that we do, well, all the things that we do as far as formulation development and really providing a product that we think is going to help and revolutionize how we uh, harvest grapes in the future. So. During our i customer discovery journey, we drove more than 2,500 miles after a few days in the road talking with great growers and visiting wineries. I know what you're thinking. We had a real good time testing a lot of good ones. Well, instead, we started to realize that our product could have other implications, not just for frost mitigation. We knew that a fruity bouquet of a Pinot Noir wine will go perfectly with a good grilled salmon, but we never imagined that actually salmon and grapes may be at war. The same water the growers use to defend their vines from a spring frost left salmon with little water in the river to complete their journey. Napa, we got a problem. Growers said that bad grape technology could help them to meet the strict water regulations now in place and save more than 30% of the water they use to protect the grapes from frost. Further along the road, we learned that spring frost problems are location dependent. We interviewed a general manager of a global winery in Washington state, and we asked if he can imagine that delayed bad grape could have some implications in the way they manage their farm operations. After a moment, I saw the light bulb go off in his mind. Yes, great idea. If we can delay bad break two weeks, then our life will be easier for planning farm operations. The capability to regulate grape and fruit crop development may provide a brand new, broader based application for fruit crop management that may eventually open up much broader markets than we had envisioned. We did not feel that these findings were a pivot, <coughs> but help us to refine our business model and discover that our technology is bigger than frost prevention and could provide solutions for growers to manage their farm in a variety of areas. Definitely, we learned a lot in this journey about our destination, and we are excited about it. Nice. So. Um, if we start by looking at this whole landscape of growing crops and particularly grapes, uh, this map 
uh, by uh, wine risk shows us the risks uh, of frosts across these across the across the world. And so these areas in this fuchsia pink are areas that are extremely high risk of having a of high frost index. And so these are areas where um, grapes are primarily grown, and these are areas that are going to experience different difficulties involving frost. And so these are a lot of target areas that we can apply our technology to. So we expect uh, the frequency and the magnitude of frost events to increase over time. So, oh, what's this thing's on the fritz. All right. So as these frost events happen and these frequencies occur, um, there's obviously a cost that's associated with these, with these and how they impact our crops. And so, I mean, you don't need me to tell you, but wine in general and grapes play a huge role in our global economy. Um, they account for over 300 billion in that space. And in the US alone, it's upwards of 85, uh, 85 billion. And this could be for consumption, this could also be for tourism. And so when these frost events occur in a field for an average size farm, 120 acres or so, um, you can expect upwards of $100,000 in loss to that particular farmer. And so our job now is to figure out how we can prevent that and lower that loss for farmers. And so our value proposition, we, we're out here really to do two things. We want to reduce the financial losses to farmers due to this spring frost. And we also want to improve the management and labor efficiency of these different farmers. So um, we do this by increasing plant hardiness and delaying plant development beyond its uh, last frost date. And then for the management, um, we have complementary technology that will allow us to reduce the labor and the machines that they use to thin these crops. And, and um, you know, this is really important for us. And he found through their customer discovery uh, due to labor shortages and how hard it is to fill those labor uh, spots in the field. And so how do we do it? And so our technical innovations that we utilize in phase one of SBR involve um, our technology. So first of all, we, we have a biodegradable product it's non-toxic, it's non-hormonal. And what we do is we uh, manage the plant development. We regulate that plant development by also regulating how much water intake is happening at the, uh, at the bud site on these dormant plants. <laughs> and so if we look at the images on the left, uh, this plant on the left is one that has not, well, that has been treated with our product and the one on the right has not. And so at the same time period of growth, you can see that that growth has been delayed significantly. And so this is a close-up view of the same thing. So um, our product prevents this growth from happening, and, and this gives farmers an extended window to process their plants, including uh, thinning and harvesting. So hopefully they can stay dormant during these winter times and then provide uh, a really good product at the end. And so the secondary part uh, that's going to be complementary to us in phase two uh, involves predictive analytics. This is the future of what we do. And so we have this predictive analytics platform that's going to aid our product to tell us when we should apply it in the fields. But then also the cool thing about it is it's complementary to whatever methods that a farmer currently uses to manage their crops. And so if you already have wind turbines, this is like a microclimate analytics. So we can tell you exactly when is the right time to use a specific technology uh, in your field. So, um, and so we, we hope that this can provide a full season kind of management for solution for farmers and harvesters of grapes. And so with that, I wanna uh, acknowledge our sponsors that we're working with now. So currently we're in the fields. I just came out of the field last weekend um, down in Southern Illinois. Manfredo is up in Washington State right now working with uh, St. Michelle Wineries and Mercer uh, Estates. And then um, this Prosser Research Center, excuse me, Prosser Research Center is working with uh, Rick Hammond uh, at Washington State to do some data analysis. And Wolfram has teamed up with us and I was down at Eckert's uh, last weekend. And then this is one of our international uh, partners, uh, Bodega Silent Team, who's gonna be another winery who's gonna work with our technology. So uh, cheers to our Frost Defense partners. And uh, this is the time I've allotted for questions. And at this time, I also wanna acknowledge uh, Brian, if he wants to come up and answer questions uh, surrounding uh, analytics, he can do that too. So questions. Thank you.